Hi there, it's Anne here on the Life LDC Knits channel. And it's I know it's been a while, and I just wanted to say uh, I'm glad to be back. It has been a while, and uh, but big things have happened here, things, big changes. We've actually moved. Um, everything sort of happened rather quickly and then rather slowly, if you know what I mean. The decision to move, getting the house ready, getting the house sold, closing dates, finding a new house, all that kind of stuff gelled. And in January of this year, we actually moved. So I'm here in my new Life LDC Knits studio. I actually have a dedicated room now for my knitting and my sewing, my crafting adventures. I have uh, a setup for top-down videoing. I think you might have noticed uh, that the, the, the setup was a little bit better when I did my uh, Magazine 61 review and my uh, abstracts review. So I'm really enjoying having that. My sewing machines are set up permanently, no moving them around and whatever. My ironing board is in this room so that I can pop over and uh, iron whenever I need to. I've got a cutting table and all my rowan books and my, oh, you can see my Harry Potter books there. But I've got all my rowan books are very at, at my fingertips. My sewing stuff is here. The only thing that isn't in this room is my uh, yarn stash, which is all downstairs. I have sort of my own personal yarn store in the basement now. I've got a big Ikea bookshelf and all my yarn is in there in plastic tubs. It's all organized, it's all labeled, and it's just great. And so I'm very organized and I'm very happy here in our new abode. So while everything here is good, um, I do just want to comment on uh, the state of the world. COVID's, COVID's rampaging again through here, Canada, and I gather all over the place, the UK and Britain and the US and everything. And I don't even really want to talk about the Ukraine because my heart sort of is broken watching all that going on. So today's subject, I was trying to think of what to talk about because I haven't, I haven't been doing a lot of crafting. Moving involves all sorts of logistics and getting, um, well, we ended up, we were, we originally started off trying to find a newer home that wouldn't need a lot of work because we just moved out of a house that we'd been in for, in for 34 years, which we had updated at least twice. It was coming for another recycle for updating. We thought, are we going to do this again? And with the big yard and everything, and I love the yard. I love the, I love sitting in the back with the hummingbirds and looking out over with the evergreens and everything, but gosh, it was a lot of work. So we decided number one, smaller property. Number two, newer house. We wanted it in, um, uh, with, uh, like services like water. We were on a well before, so we wanted, we wanted uh, water and sewage services and the gas would be nice. Um, and actually uh, a nice street, but we still, but we really worried about it not being quiet the way we were used to being in the country before. And um, anyway, long story short, we looked and looked and looked. We kept sort of moving farther and farther away from uh, Milton where we were living and we ended up about a two hour drive east in a really tiny quite a small community right by the lake I can lucky and I can walk to the lake in five minutes and uh, it's just down four houses through what I call the Snicket and there we are we're right on the lake we can walk there or we can drive over to Preskill Park and that's a beautiful park and I can't wait to see what it's like in the summer there's even beaches over there. I'm not sure I'm into swimming on beaches anymore, but it's there if you want it. Um, as, but it, so it's a big, big bird um, watching area. The, a lot of migrating birds, geese, swans, all sorts of ducks. Um, so anyway, it's a really interesting area. And we're in a community that is an adult-based community. And what I really love about it is that it's quiet. There are, the houses are all architecturally similar, but all totally different. 
even if um, even if your house looks the same as one two doors down the street when you actually look at the windows and that it's not the interiors are different it's really really quite amazing they're all sided so different uh, colors of siding and roof colors and shutter cutter colors it's it's like you're living in uh, a beachfront community and uh, while it is an adult lifestyle community it's not affiliated with a golf course or anything like that. We're not golfers. A lot of them these days are affiliated with golf courses and uh, we weren't into that. And uh, so it actually, it's turned out perfectly, but the house is 20 years old and we are the second owners. The original owner has moved on to a, to a retirement place. And so we have uh, a great house here. Lots of the good bones, the roof's done. Basement's, basement is nice and clean and dry. There's no problems or issues in the basement. And, uh, but it's, it needed, it, it needs, it did need, and it is going to need serious decor updating. It was all peach green and yellow when we got here. Oh my goodness. So the first thing we did was got a, we got a painter to come in and paint the whole place. Painted it all oatmeal. A couple of rooms I painted uh, cool concrete, which is a grayish. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was the first step. A little bit of carpeting's being put in, more carpeting. We're waiting for more carpeting. You're waiting for everything. We had to wait months for our, we ordered our new appliances in, in uh, the end of November. And they just, two of them just arrived last week. So, you know, it's, it's a process. It's going to take a while. And uh, it's actually, I'm quite fine with it because it's so relaxing here. Um, there's no great draw to like, oh, you know, um, one thing about COVID, you learned that you really don't need to go to a mall and shop every week or whatever. And, and so there's no, there's no great, like, I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing anything by being in a small community. It's only half in half an hour. We can be in a lot of different places and there's lots of lakes to go explore lots of small communities. It's going to be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to the summer here. So that, in short, is why I have been missing in action. But I am back now, and with my new setup here, I'm hoping that uh, videos are going to be much easier to create. And I can tell you one thing, our new internet service, it's blazing fast. When you do, a, when you do a, a, an internet check, speed check, it comes up. Wow, blazing fast. We have blazing fast internet service. So uploading is going to be lickety split. In the old place, oh my God, it took me, sometimes it would take me three days to upload. So, so I'm really looking forward to the new situation here. So today's subject, I have, I, I want to talk about stripes. So stripes are like everywhere. And it seems that I'm very interested in stripes. So I've got a few things to talk about stripes. So let's have, uh, I'm gonna get myself a drink. I'm gonna need some water. It's very, I'm very parched. And then we'll talk about stripes. Just a little intro to the Pebble Island yarn that uh, Rowan brought out this year. Enjoy.
This is uh, one of the things that really got me thinking about stripes. The new Pebble Island yarn from Rowan. Now this was um, a winter yarn, which I never really got to talk about. And I really do want to talk about it because it's so such a unique yarn. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so gorgeous. It's so soft. It is 100% merino. And um, it is from the Falkland Islands. This all comes from one farmer, one sheep grower, sheep raiser, sheep farmer in the Falklands. And it took them two years, two clips, two years of growth to get enough fiber to create this yarn, to get the initial production of this yarn going. And it's, uh, so it's grown on the sheep in the Falklands. It's hand sheared. They bring in shears, the top hand shears in the world come and hand shear their clip. It gets bundled up and it gets sent to Laxton's processing in the UK. I believe it's in Yorkshire. And they have a really uh, unique way of dealing with it because it's such a special fiber. And I, I watched this great interview with the owner of Laxton's and they showed you all the processing. I'm going to try and find that and put a link to it below because it was truly spectacular how they dyed it on. It's dyed in the skein and, and it goes on a roller up and down through the, the dye so that there's hardly any dye wasted and the water's recycled. It's just an amazing, um, an amazing process. And when you think about it, you know, everybody always wants to know the providence of where their yarn comes from, you know. Like, you can't ask for anything more than which farm it came from. They probably could pretty much tell you the names of the, the clip, the people, the, the shears that come every year. It gets processed in the UK. It gets dyed in the UK. Like, okay, this, if you really want to know about your yarn, this is a yarn for you. I love the idea of it and when I saw the booklet I immediately went for and I'll show you the design I'm going to talk about all of them but I'm going to show you the one that I went for immediately and it's called plateau stripe and I just thought that was so interesting the stripes and uh, it's stocking stitch, and then there's a you know garter stitch rolls, and you see the the garter stitch bumps. I just loved it. I love the colors. So um, there's not a, there's not a lot of uh, designs in this book, but they are really quite uh, there's, there's quite a variety. There's these Alex hand warmers. And there is a pullover with a placket called Maritime, and I'm going to stick, you know, I'll stick the pictures in on top of my, my talking here. So there's the um, Maritime um, sweater with a placket. It's got little vents on the side. Oh, and did I mention these are all designs by Erica Knight? You know how she likes to put little, little sort of um, interesting details in. So the plateau cardigan is shown in either a solid color or the striped version. So it's called an essential garment. I think it's gonna be great. Then there's this long um, dress length, really, uh, sweater called Meredith. I like that idea. Oh, I love the comments in this book. It says, the longer line of this sweater dress is warm and comfortable. No pulling hems down or tucking things in. I think that's great. And the photography. Now this was not, because of COVID, there was no photographing, you know, going to the Falkland Islands to photograph, which is very unfortunate, but it was photographed on a beach somewhere in the UK. I love this one, Gentoo. It's, um, it's to represent sort of the, the uh, texture of ripples of the sand at low tide. There's, there's the inspiration picture. 
minnow is a really unique sort of slashed uh, pullover. And then there's peak, what to, what to do with all those leftover scraps of yarn, neatly balled and destined for the st stash when you make these little striped hats. Rocky is a ribbed, uh, a ribbed pullover with sort of a stand-up neck, and I, and I just love the um, hand sewing around the edge, the raw edges. And Fox Bay is a cardigan with a, a v-neck cardigan front, and it has a little bit of a v at the back, and it's shown here that you can either wear the buttons at the front or the buttons on the back. Very unusual. And dot is a matching scarf that goes with the, the wrist warmers or with the hat. And then there's nest, which is a squares that are knit with diagonals and then they're all hand sewn together in Erica Knight's classic, really hand sewn style. None of this trying to hide your hand sewing. Let's let the hand sewing shine. I think that's really sort of neat. And again, beautiful, beautiful uh, scenic pictures. There are 10 colors of um, Pebble Island and it's fully traceable, responsibly farmed, hand sheared on Pebble Island in the Falklands archipelago, spun and dyed in Yorkshire. So it's absolutely gorgeous yarn. Well, of course, when I looked at the uh, winter season, I was drawn to this. And so I decided stripes. I like stripes. So I'm going to knit the striped plateau. And all this was going on when the original Let's Move came up. I'd been ask, I'd been asking the hubby about you know moving, thinking that we're getting older, we need to you know get rid of all this property and everything, and and he was like no no no, and then all of a sudden just one day it all changed. Well, I had, I think I don't know if I'd started this or if I started this. Maybe I must have already started this, and I decided in my superior intelligence that I think I am when it comes to knitting. Um, watch what you say. Uh, that I would put the black, the back and the fronts all together with a piece, um, one stitch, reverse stocking stitch to act as the side seam. And then I would split them at the underarms and I would knit up. So I've got to the, the shoulders here and I've got to, have I got to, I think I'm getting pretty close to the shoulder on this one side and I could not figure out, I was running out of stitches and I thought, what's happening here? And I counted, um, I counted all the stitches. And I don't know how I did this, but, and I'm going to have to count it again. It looks like I, mis, I miscalculated when I split for the back and the fronts. And one of the fronts is narrower than the other front, or maybe the other front is bigger than the, I don't know what which way it is, which one's right. I, ha I haven't been able to get my mind to sit down and figure out which one is right and which one I screwed up on. Oops, which one I messed up on. But you can see it's absolutely gorgeous. The colors are gorgeous. The, uh, I love the reverse stocking stitch, the texture it gives. It is so luscious. It's absolutely fabulous. And to make it all worse, I've already knit the sleeves. So I could, now luckily because I knit the body pieces together, I did cut off the yarn so the yarns are going to be longer. So I don't know, I might actually have enough to redo the whole thing. Um, but I am down pretty much to the bottom, I don't know, oh, and these are the only two full skeins I've got left. So I don't know, I might end up having to uh, buy some more yarn, which is fine. It's hard to find. I had to get this from right from Rowan in the UK. Speaking of that, so I have mentioned, and I'm just going to tell you again, 
uh, if you don't have a local rowan stockist or if your rowan stockist doesn't stock the yarn that you want, not a lot of stockists seem to have this. Uh, it is expensive, of course, but why wouldn't it be? With this, the providence of this, this yarn, it darn well should be expensive. Every single bit of it is lovingly grown, sheared, processed, and you've got these great designs from Erica Knight, or pick another another uh, another pattern that works up to this uh, this gauge. Recommended on a four and a half millimeter needle, twenty stitches and twenty eight rows. So it it is absolutely gorgeous and. A nice plain sweater this I would think I was actually thinking once I finished this I was going to knit one of the pullovers in a plain color I love the one that has the over stitching on the edge so I love this yarn this was going to be my I, I'm really disappointed that this that I didn't get a chance to really promote this yarn um, because I think it's spectacular so if you don't have a Rowan stockist that doesn't have this yarn I'm going to put in the comments in the description below an affiliate link. I'm now an affiliate of Rowan. Nobody, it's it's just a little blog or perk. I'm not, I've never made an affiliate, any money on an affiliate things, but maybe this way I can help some of you guys find yarn that you can't find at your local stockist or, or anyway. I tell you, coming from uh, Rowan is very fast. If you're in North America, it comes from the U.S. from their sister company, Sirdar, is owns the warehouse and sends it all out. And if you're in the U.K., it's going to come lickety split direct from Rowan, and uh, they've got everything there. You can you can uh, get the pattern and and the uh, the yarn, and you can even order needles. My next order, I'm going to order needles because. I really want to try those new Rowan needles. They look fabulous because I like straight needles. They have circular ones too, but I really like looking at the straight ones. So while I'm very disappointed in myself, I could boot myself about this. I do love it. I think it's going to be a great sweater when I sort it out and I am going to sort it out one way or the other. So that was my first stripey adventure I want to talk to you about. Okay, another stripey thing that's really, really caught my eye happened when this magazine came out. Fabulous cover. Imagine a former first lady taking up knitting during COVID. Way to go. So I'm looking through this and every every um oh look at that and then for the pebble beach yarn right in the uh vogue knitting i love vogue knitting i rarely knit anything from it but i love looking at the ads i love looking at the new yarns and stuff i really like looking at everything so i'm going through it i'm going through it and i get to this page at the end, so I get to this page and I look at this and I think, wow, what is this? Stripey, I love the stripey, I love the styling and I love, look at those pants. So when you, when you actually read things instead of just looking at them, what you find out is that this is a sweater designed by Kay Facet in Rowan Felted Tweed, my, my favorite yarn ever. It is stripes and the pants that are shown with it are called Arthur Pants. It says these whimsical Arthur Pants, a collaboration between Soul Liberated and designer Deborah Weiss of Specs and Keepings. And I gather Specs and Keepings, she likes to create sort of environmental friendly um, garments. So when I read that, a soul liberated pattern for these pants and uh, like, I thought, geez, I could recreate this outfit. 
for next fall when it's cool. And um, okay, I just like a challenge and I just, I just really actually love the pants. I love that they're wide, but I do love this sort of like side pleat or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm gonna pull out, I've gotta go yarn shopping because I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the exact colors in this, in the, uh, as shown here. I did buy some fabric. I'll share that with you at a later date. So anyway, I decided, sorry, I got interrupted by a silent phone call there. Um, so I thought, how wonderful would that be to actually create something, you know, create a garment and um, a sewing garment and a knitting garment and create it to make a outfit. And I know that might sound silly because maybe you do that all the time, but Sometimes I just knit things because I, I like to knit things. And I'll tell you, I knit things and then I don't wear them for years. And then all of a sudden something clicks and either I've bought something in my, uh, in my wardrobe or I found something because, you know, you put things in the back of the closet and you never find it. And so, or you find something and you think, oh, gee, this looks really good together and you start wearing it. <clears throat> You know, it's it's just those little mysteries of life. So I thought I'm going to be try and be a little bit more, um, even more, not a little bit more. I'm going to try and be even more uh, planning with some kind of intention to create a, a, a me made wardrobe. You know, anyway. So it's it's just it's just a new focus in life, and I think having a sewing room is going to be great. So um, I am knitting. I'm not working on the striped plateau right now, but I am knitting. And another thing that I've decided, I decided that beautiful teal colored creative linen that I made the great big stand up collar, big, big arms, big, big body. I made, um, that I made it was uh, Kim Hargreaves design. Oh my God, Kim Hargreaves is retiring. So all those Kim Hargreaves books you've got, you keep them because if you're a fan of Kim Hargreaves, you know that you can knit from them forever because she has a certain style. If you're a Kim Hargreaves person, you can recreate them forever. You don't have to have the exact yarn. I know she uses the basic rowing yarns, but she also puts in all the the specials in that so anyway you can you could knit from Kim Hargreaves forever so this year's books are the last books so um, anyway I ripped it out because I thought it's in the closet I'm not wearing it it's just too big and I did wear it on one of my videos and I remember looking at the video and this shoulder was down like this and uh, I thought okay it just doesn't it's just too too much even for me and I am a big person so I ripped it out and I've started knitting one of the designs out of magazine 72. Is my book here somewhere? I don't know. Oh, there it is over there. And it's one of the um, Erica Knight designs and it's an absolute plain little pullover and it has a little neck opening. Hold on, I'll just get the book and then we'll we know what we're talking about. Here I am jumping the guns. It's Rowan Magazine 71. I think I had said Rowan Magazine 72. I'm already thinking to the number 72. So this design that I'm doing is called Comfort and it is by Erica Knight. It is in creative linen and they don't have the greatest picture of it, but I will stick one in here. But you'll see that there is a there's a, a traveling, sort of traveling stitch going up on one sleeve and across the front and it goes up the back. It, it goes across the front and it joins up to this little, little opening in the neckline. So I'm really enjoying knitting it and I think um, I'll get much more use out of it. It's not, it's, it's, um, it's not a fitted sweater. It's, it's sort of a casual fit. It's a relaxed fit. A relaxed fit is the word I'm looking for. So it has ease, it's quite relaxed, 
but it's not oversized. And there is a difference between oversized and relaxed. So I'm really looking forward to wearing this. This goes right up to the neck. So you see, it's still, it's still going to be a bigger fit, a, rela a relaxed fit, but it's not going to be huge and it's not, I love this color. So I'm hoping that that might be done next time we get together. And for a knit chat. And in the meantime, I have a few things that I want to review. And in particular, the Modet Rowan Collection 6 and Martin Story's Tea Garden. Lackey just came to see me. Um, it was pretty rough on Lackey when we moved. He actually ended up with a really serious case of either bronchitis or, or kennel cough or whatever. Right now, he's on a puffer. And uh, you, you might wonder how the heck do you give a dog a full vent puffer? And there's, a, um, you know, the chamber. I don't know if anybody in your life has ever had to use a, a puffer. Well, my mother used to, and that's why I know all about the flow vent, the puffer thing. So had to order a doggy chamber for him. And then, uh, so it, twice a day, he sits on my lap and he gets his puffer. I'll put a little video in here. So this has been a quick update and I do know that I owe someone a copy of a church mouse pattern, the uh, scarf with the eyelets in it, the big holes in it. So I'm going to draw that name and I'll put it down below here on the screen and that person um, get in touch with me um, on Ravelry. Uh, I'll put my, my Ravelry name downstairs. You know what, I'll sleep downstairs. I'll put my Ravelry name down below if you can send me a message via Ravelry. If you're not on Ravelry, no, just, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming everybody's on Ravelry even if you don't use it. So I am going to wish you all the best. I hope you are well. I hope you stay well. I hope you're enjoying your hobbies. I hope uh, that you're looking forward to a good summer or winter, depending on where you are in the world and what hemisphere you're in. I love the change of seasons. It's definitely spring here. The robins are all over the place. And, and I almost think I can see buds on the trees. It might be too early for that, but I almost think I can. So, Mackie and I say thank you very much for joining us. I hope you have uh, subscribed to the channel so that you can uh, know when new videos are coming up because I think I'm going to be videoing more now that I finally got back into this the, the, the role. This wasn't as hard as I thought. I've been putting it off and putting it off because it was just sort of bothering me that I can keep having to talk again on, on, uh, on uh, YouTube. Anyway, so here's to everybody. Cheers. Gosh, come on. Let's spread a little love and joy and, and make it a better world as best we can. Take care. Bye-bye. This is just a short little video to show you how uh, Lackey gets his flow vent puffer. You give it a really good shake, which I'd already done before I did this. So I, I you give it a shake and then you get it situated on his little nose and you give it one puff and he starts to breathe into it. And you count the puffs because the uh, the flow vent has a little valve thing on it there that you can uh, that you can see when he's actually taking a big deep breath. And so I count to about ten, and when he's done ten, that's it. He's ready.